Sew Country and today is the third Halloween sewing marathon. I'm thankful that I've been able to participate in all three of them. I'm thankful for the pattern designers that have gave us permission to make these tutorials for all the other sewers who have put aside time to create the videos and for you in the sewing community that have supported all of us and talked with us and that have made this such a fun experience. So thanks to everybody involved for today's tutorial. I will be sewing up the Seemingly Wicked pattern. This is the Coffin Handbag. Seemingly Wicked is the first designer that I ever saw make a coffin shaped handbag. I have had this pattern for years and I've just been a little too nervous to attempt it to be honest. So this marathon was the push I needed to attempt this shape and this gusset and I was not disappointed. The designer has a very unique way of sewing this gusset on. It is one that I have not used before, so I really appreciated um, the knowledge and the information I learned while sewing this pattern. It is a reproducible pattern, which is very important to me, meaning that when you make it once, it's not just a one-off. You can make these again and again using that same technique to get that perfect finish. So while you can see that my bag, and this is the one I'm sewing up in the video today, did turn out well, uh, it, despite the fact that I make mistakes, that lets you know it's a good quality pattern. So join me for sewing up this beautiful bag and thank you Seemingly A Wicked for allowing me to do this. I had the link to the pattern and also the designer's own video tutorial in my description. She does an amazing job and hers is so much more fun than mine. Mine's kind of boring and, and simple and hers is definitely more entertaining. So watch both videos, watch everyone's videos today and thanks again for all the support. It means so much to me and if you have any questions or concerns let me know and I hope to see your coffin handbag soon. Let's go ahead and talk about the pieces we are going to need to make this bag. There's not a lot of pieces to cut out so it makes it a really quick cut and a really quick sew. The first thing I want to talk about is our main panel. We're going to have a main panel front and back exterior and lining. For my main panels, I'm using the same print for both interior and exterior. I'm choosing to use a cotton woven. I did interface all pieces with SF101 equivalent. And then I also added a, de a layer of Decaville light equivalent and kept it out of the seam allowance on only the exterior pieces. So you should have two interior, two exterior pieces. I went ahead and added my tag. I'm using a tag from Heartwood and Hyde. My fabric is all from Jane R. Edwards. I will leave a link in my description to where I get all my supplies. The next thing we need to talk about is our gusset. That is going to go all the way around the bag and that is where we have the most pieces actually. So I have a number five zipper. My zipper is from So Majestic. And then I have my zipper panel pieces. I am cutting out four pieces, two exterior and two lining. I'm using a waterproof canvas. On the back of the interior ones, I don't have anything. I'm leaving them plain. But on the back of the exterior gusset zipper panel pieces, I'm using a layer of the Sofuse Plus from Casting Handcrafted. I am keeping it out of my seam allowance on those. So two exterior, two lining. Also, to create the gusset, we need side panels. We need two exterior side panels. Again, I'm using waterproof canvas and I'm adding a layer of the Sofuse Plus, kept out the seam allowance on the exterior for the lining, waterproof canvas, and nothing on the back of these. We also will have a gusset bottom piece. For the bottom piece, I'm going to have an exterior and a lining. The exterior, again, is interfaced with that deck of a light equivalent. Waterproof canvas, nothing on the back of it. So those are the pieces to create our gusset. I'm going to have D-ring connectors. So I'll have two of those, waterproof canvas, nothing on the back. I'm going to have my strap. Now I was going to use webbing for my strap, but I did not have any black webbing. I cannot believe that. And the amount of gray that I had was not long enough. So I'm going to make 
my strap just the old-fashioned way so I've cut the strap out and I will interface it and sew it probably off camera but it depends on how long this video runs binding I am going to bind this bag with waterproof canvas so I cut this out same print it'll match everything pretty perfectly which is what I always want with my binding since I'm using waterproof canvas I'm cutting my binding smaller because with this I'm not going to do my single fold method and fold it over I'm just going to clamp it over at one time and sew around it so this one can be cut smaller width so that you since you're not folding it over because the ends are raw and they won't fray and you can just leave them unfinished that's all the materials I need to cut out, but I also need some hardware. I'm choosing to use two zipper pulls on this one, but you can use one. And then for the other hardware, I'm using this from Maple and Sunshine. I have my two one-inch D-rings. I have my two one-inch swivel hooks, and then I also have one one-inch adjustable bar. This will be everything I need to connect the strap to the bag and so this will also be linked into my description where I get this but that is everything I need to get started making this bag super quick super simple to get a cut but just remember like I said in the beginning you can make this out of several different things you can use vinyl clear vinyl waterproof canvas cotton or just regular canvas so such a versatile pattern but now let's get started sewing everything up the first thing I want to start working on is the gusset. This is the part that probably takes the longest in the entire pattern. There's several steps to it and the designer has a unique way of doing it. So that's what we're going to get started with first. So I'm going to take my two D-ring connector pieces. I went ahead and drew a line down the center. And all I'm going to do now is just fold the raw edges, the long raw edges to that line on both sides. If you wanted, you could top stitch down both of those long edges. I don't feel necessary in doing that because only a little bit of this D-ring connector is going to show. So I'm just going to put a clip on each side. I'm going to get my D-ring connectors out and I'm going to put the D-ring connector on here. So I will just slide my D-ring connector on now that I have those raw edges folded to the center. Fold this in half, matching up those raw edges. And the next thing I will do is I'm going to top stitch as close as I can to the connector just to secure it in place. I don't want it flopping around. Then I'll go ahead and baste this in close. So I'll do that for both of my D-ring connectors while I'm sitting down to the sewing machine. I'm also going to work on the zipper gusset panel pieces. We have four of these. The first thing I like to do is First off, I don't put my zipper pulls on until the end after I finish this step just because they kind of get in the way and there's not, they're not necessary. So I take one of my lining panel pieces, I have it right sides up, I put my zipper right sides up on top of it, I match up that long edge, and the first thing I do is I just baste that in place. After I baste it, then you will see me come back and take one of my exterior pieces, even though they look the same, I know this is the exterior because it has my heavier interfacing on it. So once I have this based in place, then I just go ahead and add that exterior piece. I lay it down right sides together with the zipper tape. So it will be right sides together also with the lining. This is a typical zipper sandwich. You can sew this all in one step if you want. I don't your choice you could use double sided tape clips whatever you need to do to make sure you get that nice and secured and straight make sure your ends are matched up the short ends of these panels after we get this stitched together you will see me flip these pieces wrong sides together and then top stitched an eighth of an inch away i'll be top stitching on my exterior zipper gusset piece just an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge that i just sewed I'm going to do all these steps. I'll repeat it for the other side. You'll see me doing all these on camera, and that will be how I get this zipper gusset panel pieces prepped and ready to install with the rest of the gusset. So 
So I have the two zipper panels attached to my zipper with the linings added on as well. I have the two D-ring connectors with the D-rings on them. I'm going to do a couple steps off camera. I'm going to trim up all my threads. I'm going to add my zipper pulls. And one other thing I'm going to do is the pattern tells us exactly what this zipper gusset panel should be measuring at. We have to trim it down. I'm not going to do that on camera because I don't want to give out those final measurements. So go ahead and use the measurements given the pattern and trim everything down. Add your zipper pulls and then we will come back to do the next steps. So what I went ahead and trimmed down my gusset for the exact measurements given the pattern. I have my two D-ring connectors ready to go. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and baste my D-ring connectors onto my zipper panel. And then I'm going to work on attaching my side panel pieces. So I want my D-ring to be facing on the inside and I want a pretty good overlap. And the pattern tells you how much to overlap and the pattern also tells you that you attach this to the top of your side panel but either way it's going to be fine so i'm just going to put mine right here and i'm going to have that overlap there and i'm going to base this in place on both sides of this zipper panel i'm going to baste a d-ring connector onto both sides of the zipper panel i also should mention that you do center your d-ring right there so you can see it's perfectly centered in with the tape repeat that for the other side okay I have both of those connected now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, side panels we're going to have one interior one exterior we're going to make that same kind of zipper sandwich but we're going to make it without the zipper so what I'll do is I will take my zipper gusset piece and I'm going to have it right sides up I'll take the lining and it's going to go right sides together with the lining so it'll be right sides up, zipper panel right sides up. Your zipper gusset piece, you're gonna flip it and put it right sides down. You can base these individually, but where I, I feel like where it's such a small distance, it's okay to do this part all together, but definitely feel free to baste the lining or exterior on one at a time if you want. Before we sew this, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we're gonna attach this. We are going to make a hinged gusset. What this means is that we're not going to sew from edge to edge. We are going to use the measurement given in the pattern and we're going to make that mark on both sides. I chose to make mine on the lining but you can make it on the exterior too. What you will do is you will start sewing from that spot that you, that line you drew. So that mark you're going to start sewing. I'll put my needle down right there, go a few stitches forward, a few stitches back to lock in those stitches and then go over to the next mark back stitch and then don't go any farther than those two marks so that will mean that you will have these two gusset pieces not attached to each other they will be free that will allow us to put this gusset around that main panel a little bit easier because we'll have that little bit of spread a little bit of give on those sharp corners so i'm coming over my machine i'm sewing with my full seam allowance I'm putting my needle down directly where that first line is made. I'm going to go forward a few stitches, come back a few stitches, making sure I don't cross that line, and then go on sewing the rest of the way with that seam allowance given. Make sure your hardware is flipped down towards your zipper so that you don't accidentally hit it with your needle. Go over to that next mark you made. Stop when your needle is at that mark, back stitch. Go forward, break your stitches. You can see then that you do have that opening right there. I'm not trimming my connector down. I want that for a little bit more security, but I'm going to go ahead and flip these wrong sides together. I'm going to top stitch this, these two pieces together now, and I'm going to top stitch on my side gusset, but I'm also going to use that same measurement when top stitching, I'm not going to attach these two pieces together. Now you could go ahead and make marks on your exterior or lining if you want, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it up and kind of note where it is and then put my needle down right there. Not, not too tricky, but if it bothers you or if you're worried about it being perfect, you can definitely go ahead and make marks there. I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge and I'm going to make sure I backstitch 
And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just kind of note where I'm going to stop sewing. Go back and stitch and forward a stitch. So even though I've top stitched, you can see I still have that opening. They can still be separated. That is what we want. This is going to be considered our hinged gusset. So when we're attaching everything around, we have a little bit more room to kind of maneuver things. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that same process with my other two side panels on the other side of my gusset. Okay, I repeated that for the other side gusset. So now I have one side gusset all the way to the other. I'll still need to trim my threads. Something else the pattern tells you can do is you can put a rivet right here where your D-ring connector is so you can have a little more stability. I'm not going to do that, but definitely if you're concerned, you can do that, especially if you have bulky materials, you would want to put that there. Last thing we need to do to complete this gusset is to go ahead and add these bottom pieces. The pattern tells us that we're going to add these separately. What that means is we'll take our exterior piece and we'll attach it to the exterior piece of the side panel. So exterior bottom to exterior side panel. We are going to clip these in place just like this and we're going to use that same sewing technique that we did on the side where we don't sew in that set amount. So you can go ahead and mark that and sew it that exact same way so it'll be a hinged gusset piece leaving those initial spots here on the sides free and open. We're going to sew this with that seam allowance in the pattern. While we're doing that piece, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the lining piece, attaching it and leaving those spots open so it's a hinged gusset on the lining as well. Let's sew these two pieces separately and then we will come back to attach it to the other side. Now that we attach the bottom pieces of the gusset to the side panels gusset, what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch. But instead of just pushing the seam to one side or the other, we're going to actually open this seam up. And this is what I call butterflying. I know some people don't, but we're just going to open the seam and then we're going to top stitch on both sides of the seam. But we are going to leave this part open so it's still hinged. So we will top stitch everything, but make sure that you are keeping that opening there so that you're not like pushing the seam one way and it closed. So we are going to do this on both the exterior of the lining, open your seam, top stitch down both sides. So you can see I top stitched down both sides of the seam an eighth of an inch away, and I still have an opening for that hinge. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this free edge of the bottom gusset and flip it around to the free edge of the side panel. I'm again going to attach exterior to exterior. I'm again going to sew this as a hinged panel so I will not sew from edge to edge. Here's the exterior clipped right sides together. Let's go ahead and clip that lining right sides together as well. So this is what I have both of them clipped independently. I'm going to go ahead and sew both of them as a hinged gusset and then I will spread the seams open, butterfly the seams, and top stitch down each side of the seam. Okay, now that I have everything sewn together, I'm just going to put these together. And I'll match up all the seams and clip them all the way around. Now the pattern tells you to go ahead and add your binding at this point, but since I'm doing a waterproof canvas binding, I won't need to do that because I'm just going to be clamping mine around both ends. But if you're doing a traditional single fold binding where you sew it on, then fold it over and attach it again to, um, on the other side, you could go ahead and add your binding now. So now that we have our gusset finished, it's time to work on our main panels. So it's time to work on our main panel since we have our gusset done. While I was doing that, I decided I wanted to add something a little different, just a slip pocket to the lining side. So what I did was I went ahead and attached binding and a slip pocket to the back of one of the lining pieces. I'm going to show you how I do that and the materials I use. It was just a last minute choice, so I really don't have any measurements. What I do want to say is that you definitely wouldn't want to have your slip pocket end 
right here in the corner. We want to leave those corners free so we have the least amount of drama possible going on in these corners. We don't want any extra bulk or anything like that. So for this lining piece, I made this slip pocket really tall. For this one, I'm going to make it short. If you have something short, you don't want to have to reach your hand all the way down the bottom to get it. But if you have something tall that you want in case, this is a perfect fit for it. But for this one, I'm going to make it short. So let me pull my exterior out of the way. What I'm using is this is a mesh. I don't know how clearly that shows up, but it is really firm. It's almost like a window screen mesh, but it's still foldable and easy to work with, extremely thin. So I really like this. I'll put the link to where I got this in the description. I'm also going to take a piece of fold over elastic. Uh, this is, let's see, about a half of an inch. And so what I do first is I kind of go ahead and fold it right in that crease. You can see there's just like a little crease in the middle and I fold it. And this, the purpose of folding it ahead of time is just so the fold over elastic knows how to lay. So it kind of is easier when you sew it. It just is already kind of laying down. So I fold it in half, wrong sides together. Then I take my piece of mesh and I just wrap it around there. So you can see it just fits on both sides. I want to cut this fold over elastic a little bit longer than the piece of mesh just so I can start sewing here. Where fold over elastic is kind of stretchy and silky, I find that if I start sewing here at the end before I actually get to the mesh, it's a little bit easier to work with. So that's something I always do, make sure it's a little bit longer. As far as the size of the mesh that I cut, I did not measure at all. I just rough cut it. And so I want this one, like I said, shorter, but I still don't want it in those corners. So this is the way this one will look. You don't need to measure it. You know, you just make sure it's kind of straight so it's not like looking really bad. No, no worries about the measurements or anything on that. Just eyeball it. I am going to fold this over. I have in the beginning when I first started working with fold over elastic, I would even kind of glue one side down to kind of help stabilize it. At this point, I feel very comfortable with it, so I don't even do that. I don't clip it. I just kind of sew it organically. So what I do is I get it under my needle, and like I said, I start it on the elastic part only. That's where I start first. So my mesh is not under the needle. I'm going to start stitching, and when you're using elastic, something stretchy or slippy, don't go fast, go very slow. I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length to about a four, just so it's a little easier to work through. But if you start going fast, those speed dogs are gonna be pulling and stretching and bunching and it's just a mess. So go slow and start stitching without the mesh. Once you get to the mesh part, take two stitches, go back one to kind of lock in those stitches and then just keep folding and tucking it down and going through that. It's a very easy way to do it. Try to stay like an eighth of an inch from the raw edge, but really it's where it's such a small piece, it's not even gonna matter too much if you don't get a perfect seam allowance on this. As long as you catch both sides, you're good. Now that I've got that attached, I'm just going to line up the bottom edge. As you can see, I have overhang on both sides. Not worried a bit about it. I'll trim it down at the end. I'm going to put a clip at the bottom there. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to baste the three sides to secure that place. I'll kind of keep my hand there so it stays flat and not bubbly. And then I'll trim it off and then another slip pocket will be done and we'll move on to the next step. So now we have two slip pockets on the lining pieces. The next thing we need to do is to attach the lining and the exterior pieces. So I went ahead and did it with this one on the first. So here's my back, here's my lining, this is my exterior. So what you do is go ahead and grab out one exterior and one lining piece. Take your exterior, place it right sides down Take your lining and place it right sides up, match up your edges, and then you're just going to baste all the way around. And then that makes both of these pieces ready to be attached to the gusset. So let's look at the pieces we have now. We have our exterior front, our exterior back with the linings attached. 
We also have our gusset. I went ahead and marked the centers on my top and my bottom gusset. I still have my binding and then I went ahead and sewed up the strap off camera. So this is what we have left. This is what I'm going to be working with. The pattern tells us we're going to sew this gusset into segments and that way we're going to be able to get as crisp as corners as possible. We want them nice and sharp and everything looking great. So the first thing she does is she tells us the best way that she feels to do that whenever you're first starting out. That's to draw your seam allowance on here. At the spots where the seam allowance intersects in these corners, you can shade those in and that lets you know exactly where to start and stop stitching. We're not going to just go completely in a loop and sew the gusset on at one time. We're going to sew it in those segments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my exterior part of the gusset and I'm going to match it up with the center of this top part, right sides together. You can make your marks to make sure everything looks nice and neat. But what we'll do now is we will sew on the top of this gusset piece to the top exterior of this bag. So exteriors are right sides together. The pattern tells us that we're not going to sew completely across the top of this. We're not going to sew from one edge to one edge. The pattern tells us how far in we're going to start and where we're going to stop. So you'll put your needle down there, go forward two stitches, then back stitch, sew over with the seam allowance given the pattern, then come to the next mark, back stitch, and go forward. But you will be leaving these spots open so that it can pivot and it can turn easily and this gusset will make a snip in it so that it can spread and we'll keep those points nice and sharp. So let's go ahead and sew the top part of the gusset on. So you can see this top part of the, gut, the bag is not attached to the gusset. You have a little bit of a gap there on both sides. We're going to re repeat that same process to the bottom of our main exterior. So now we're going to make a tiny snip here in the top of our gusset so that it can have a little bit of relief so it can go and open around this corner a little bit easier so that it's not um, just a straight line we can get that little bit of a sharp point. So I'm just going to come in and within my seam allowance I'm not going to go too, I'm not going to go all the way to my seam allowance, I'm just going to make a little diagonal snip there to give that gusset just a little bit of room to open up. I'm not cutting into my main panel, just the gusset. You can see just a little snip there so that it can open up a little bit more. Now that I've got that opened, I can have a little bit of room to bend it down to get to that next point right there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open and clip those raw edges together on both sides to this next point on the coffin bag. Our next point should be the place where you have the hinged gusset which will make that spot already easier for it to turn because it has that give already in it. So you can see what it's looking like from the inside. You can see what it's looking like from the lining side and see how it's going to go around. So I'm going to do that same process here. Start stitching, back stitch, go down here, stop stitching and back stitch on both sides. We're going to repeat that same process then all the way around to finish it up. So after I do these two sides, then I'm going to do the bottom two sides. Then I'll do the same thing all the way over again for the other side and then bind everything up and then we're done. Okay, now I have this gusset all the way attached, so let's just pop it out and see how it's looking to see if I'm liking everything, if I missed any of these points, or if I need to redo anything. So far, everything is looking great. My points are spot on. I mean, it's not like perfect, like you'll see a little bunching, but I don't know. I'm completely okay with that. So I feel good. Everything looks great. And so now at this point, typically what I do 
is I go ahead and attach the bonding to one side before I attach the other side. And I went back and forth on this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do it just to give myself like, oh, one side's completely done. And then I won't do the other side while I'm on camera. Just so you guys aren't like having to sit and watch through all of this. So I have my binding cut and I actually cut this at one and a quarter inches wide. If I don't like, if it's too wide, I'm going to go and trim this down because I have a feeling it might be a little too wide because my seam allowance, it's not a really bulky bag where I kept everything out of the seam allowance. So I'm thinking I may need to trim this down a little bit. I'm actually okay with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my waterproof canvas and I'm just going to fold it in half. It folds really easy. You can see how it just holds its shape really well. So I'm going to fold this all the way around. I'm going to take one end and fold it under just like I typically do. And then I'm just going to clip this on the seam allowance. So it's just going to be clipped all the way around just like that. Then what I will do is after I get this clipped on, I'm just going to come back and sew all the way around this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Nothing tricky. So the seam allowance you just used to sew on the gusset, you're going to use that same seam allowance to sew on the binding. Now when I get to the corners, I'm just going to push in that binding so that I make a crease there so it looks nice and sharp. You can see a little crease right there so no no fancy tricks or anything I'm just pushing it down so I'm going to continue clipping all the way around get this binding on and then you will see me sew all the way around with the binding with that same seam allowance given the pattern and then I will do this entire same process to the other side and that will complete my coffin bag so I have the binding all clipped in place. Now it's time to just stitch all the way around with the seam allowance given the pattern. My binding is a little bit wider than I usually would like for it to be. So I really feel like instead of an inch and a quarter, I should have cut my binding for maybe about just an inch. I think that would have been perfect where my material isn't thick. That's why binding, you kind of never know exactly how wide because if I would have used a vinyl and it would have been thicker materials, I would have needed that extra quarter of an inch. But if you're using materials like mine, it's thinner, go with the inch for the waterproof canvas binding. So my binding is attached. If it's bothering you where it's long, you can pop it out like this and trim it down. I may or may not, it just depends on how I'm feeling. But honestly, once you get everything closed, like this is on the inside, it really won't make too much of a difference. So I think it's okay. But now that I have this side completely sewn and bound, I just have to repeat that same process on the other side. Now, whenever I'm attaching everything to this side, I wanna make for sure that I have this panel lined up really nicely. So I want to definitely make sure that I have everything symmetrical because if you have it kind of lopsided or crooked, it's definitely going to show at the end. So take the time to match your centers, match everything up, sew the gusset again in segments and just go around it slow and then I will come back whenever I have everything sewn before I turn it inside out though and then we'll also finish the strap and get that ready. Now, if I was great at um, video making, I would build anticipation and not turn this bag right side out. At this point, I would go ahead and make my strap first and kind of let the momentum build, but I am not that kind of person and I'm terrified <laughs> that I mess this up. I have to, I have to see. I've been filming all day. I want to see how this looks and then I will sew my strap. So I have the binding on both sides. Everything's good and I want to see how it looks. I'm very excited and hopeful that I can have my corners good. It's going to take me a little while to push it all out, so I'll speed this part up. Okay, so my coffin handbag is done. Everything looks pretty good. I'm not an expert with um, gussets. I think it's great. Um, 
I will need to poke out some more. I'll take my stiletto and take time to poke and clip. I don't think I got these quite as close as I would like to. They look kind of like Shrek ears hanging out. That's okay. For um, you, if you do yours, just make sure you get closer. I just didn't have enough of an overhang on mine. That's not a fault of the pattern. That's a fault of me. So anyway, here is my handbag. Now I just need to make my strap. So I'm going to take the strap and I am going to take the adjustable bar for my hardware. First thing I do, let me just move this aside so you can see clear. I just feed one end through that adjustable bar. Then come down the other side. I go ahead and fold the raw end under and clip it. I don't want any of that raw ends showing. If you're using vinyl, you would not, you would just clip it the one time. You wouldn't tuck the raw end in or it'd be too thick. Make sure I don't get it twisted. Come to the free end. Slip one swivel hook on. Then take that free end, again, making sure you don't get anything twisted. Come back up through your adjustable bar. Over again. And then you will take that end and put it through the other swivel hook. Fold that raw end under again. I'll make sure I have both of my raw ends to the right to the same side. Put a clip there. And then to sew this, just to finish out your crosswise strap, you'll just sew, I usually sew two rows of stitches here at this end, two rows of stitches here at this end. You could also do rivets if you wanted. And then that will complete the crossbody. And that officially ends my tutorial. So, I want to thank you for watching another one of these Halloween sewing marathons. This is the third and the last one. I really appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate the community hanging out with me, talking, supporting me. You guys are amazing, and I'm so thankful. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any tutorials you want to see, let me know. My materials here, the fabric and the waterproof um, canvas, are from Jane R. Edwards. The tag is from Jade from Heartwood and Hyde. The zipper tape is from So Majestic. The hardware, as far as the swivel hooks, the D-rings, and the adjustable bar are all from Maple and Sunshine. All the links will be listed in my description. And, of course, the pattern is from Seemingly Wicked. This is the Coffin Handbag. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great Halloween. I hope you have a wonderful day sewing. And I hope you're able to watch everyone else's videos and be inspired and be able to make your own creations.